Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Man, I feel like I've been through a windstorm or something. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. We'll get through this today. God willing. Woohoo. <laughs> Anybody get touched this morning? If you didn't, make sure your neighbor touches you. Good and strong. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis 3 and verse 9. Thank you, Master. Is everybody there? Genesis 3, verse 9. You know, um, as we can... I'll see there is so much stuff going on in the world. Amen? And we know that there's a tremendous amount of exposure. There's a purpose for exposure. We are in what we call end time exposure. The Lord said that in the last days he would expose many things. Now there is purpose of exposure. First of all, to expose the enemy. Amen? And the deceptions but also the exposures in hope that others who are blind would be able to see. And, and many people that are seeing are not understanding. And there's things that they lack. That's God's presence, number one. They lack that, they lack that true relationship with the Lord. They lack that area of connected in faith. They're not consistent. And in that, there's discipline that makes consistency. Listen, you can't trust someone that's not consistent. Amen? If somebody doesn't show up at the job consistently, obviously you know there's something not right with them. They're unstable. If they're misled instead of being led, they may say they're led, but God wouldn't interrupt himself. Amen? So when God establishes something, there must be a consistency because God will never promote an individual that it's not consistent. Never. He doesn't do that. He'd be coming against his own self then. Amen? So right now what we're seeing is end time exposure. And the greatest that it's ever been. And we're going to continue to see its escalation more and more and more. The purpose also is so that, again, that the world may see what's going on so that they can come to their knees and repent and turn from their wicked ways by either promoting or voting for these things or, or being disconnected from God's presence. Or if they're caught up in deception and delusion themselves. We are in end time exposure. And you know what? The word says that the enemy's wrath would become greater. And why would his wrath become greater and his anger become greater? Because he's being exposed more. You know, when people get exposed in sin, they don't like it. Oh, they get angry. <laughs> they don't like it, man. Why? Because sin is darkness. And here light is shining in a dark area. And they don't like it. There's justification. There's reasoning. There's anger. There's frustration. There's blame. They always claim to be the victim when they're the blame. They're the problem, not the victim. And in this end time exposure, this is what God is exposing. He is exposing the person of victim. Amen. Amen. Claiming to be victim when they're actually the blame. Listen, everything that happens to me and usually we bring on ourselves. Because of something we've said, something we've done, something we've agreed with. Something. There's something that we've brought on ourselves. The word says make no place for the devil. 
Well, that's the area where if you've done something that has opened a door, remember the devil knocks at every door. He's seeking whom he may devour. And so all of these things, there's going to be an, a larger arena of more and more exposure. More and more. Things that we've seen. We haven't seen enough yet. Now, we know a lot, but the world doesn't know what we know. They can't understand it because they're still in darkness. They're still veiled. The only way that they can become unveiled is through something chaos that's happening to them or affecting their lives. Hopefully. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 9. Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Now this is after they blew it. Amen? They rebelled. They partook of the tree that was the tree of death. So the Lord called to Adam and, and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I want you to understand something that his first thing in reality for him is he never even heard the word fear. So he said, I'm afraid. Well, where did he learn? What the heck was fear? He didn't even know it. And the other thing that he was afraid of was because he was naked. He had never acknowledged himself of being naked. First of all, he was clothed with the glory of God. Amen? And nakedness is a representation of exposure of sin. So he was stripped of the garments of righteousness and the glory. Does everybody get it? He was stripped from it. It was removed from him. And he said, who told you that? Verse 11, you were naked. Have you eaten or partaken from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat or partake? And the man said, the woman, here we go, whom you gave to me with me, she gave me of this tree and I partook. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me. So we've got a blame game going on here. And the Lord said to the serpent, now here was the first judgment. Because you've done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put hatred enmity between you, your seed, and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sour in your conception. That is a very strange judgment. Amen? Does everybody understand that? I mean, if you sinned, you sinned, right? If you actually partook of a tree that was fruit, then he'd say, that's it. No more fruit for you. He wouldn't curse the womb. He wouldn't curse the bearing. Does everybody understand that? Unless there was something involved with it. He said, in pain you shall bring forth children. And your desire shall be for your husband and not the serpent. And he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, because you've heeded the voice of of your wife and have eaten from this tree in which I commanded you saying you shall not partake of it or eat of it curse is the ground for your sake in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you and you shall eat the herb of the field in sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you were taken for dust you are and dust you shall return and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living in this realm. It was going to be the first. Also, now, she, does everybody understand it? The mother of all living. In other words, obviously there was something that happened that she was carrying children. Also, for Adam and his wife, the Lord made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. 
So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword, which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. Again, they were stripped of their garments of righteousness and glory. Adam partakes in deceptive pleasure and brings instant blame. Now, the first thing he, why would instant blame come? Because he was protecting his new self-awareness. Everyone say self-awareness. That's the new creation. That was the new person of self-awareness. Does everybody understand? He now also, when became self-aware, his awareness was no longer associated with God first. It was with him first. Amen? <clears throat> Hallelujah. The woman blamed, of course, the serpent, the source of all deception, who brings delusion and false perceptions. The serpent also is the Antichrist, the ruler of the earth. So Adam lost position, didn't he? He lost position. The serpent took it over. That was Adam's judgment. Adam's judgment was to pay the price for every gain. Does everybody see that? Why? Because he sent them out and he said, look, from this day forward, you're going to have to earn everything. Other than that, I provided everything. Now you're going to have to earn it. I'll be there with you. I'll oversee you. But you're going to have to labor to earn everything. Does everybody understand that? So nothing is granted. Everything is earned, isn't it? There's always something that you must do to get something. There's a price to pay. Eve's pain of bearing children and a desire for a husband and not for the serpent was implemented. Again, I'm not going to go into all of this because we know that she just didn't take an apple off the tree and get pregnant. Hello? There was trees. These are all symbolic, aren't they? Trees represent spirit presence. Fruits represent who they are. That's why the word says you'll know them by their fruit. Hatred was between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. The battle still is here. The battle will continue until the end of time. Because once time is done, we're done. Amen? Adam and Eve were restored. There was a restored covering. But there was no pardon of judgment. There was a restored covering. But there was no pardon of judgment. Because God will not come against his own word. If he says, you take this, you're going to die. You're going to die. Amen? The wages of sin is what? Death. Adam heeded the voice of deception and partook of the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And a new self-awareness was birthed. Is everybody okay? This is, was an, this is an exposure. You got to remember, here's Moses with the Lord, right? Think about this. Moses is with the Lord 40 days. Of course, for him it felt like five minutes. But God implemented everything to him, imparted him. Moses wrote the first five books. Wrote, Moses wrote everything. Can you imagine Moses' head going, Oh, are you kidding me? This is what happened in the, in the garden, man. Now that's why you're sending me to fight these stinking giants? Lost the Farians? I mean, he must have been blown away, man. He, need, he must have had shorthand or something. I don't know, but... You know, he didn't have recorders then, but he must have, of course, his mind was quite clearer than ours were these days. <laughs> so now this exposure at that point where God was allowing Moses to expose all of these things from that present, he was into past. And then the prophets were beginning to expose all the things in the future, which is pretty marvelous of what was happening. And now we're in an end time exposure where all of it is coming to the surface. All the exposure from the past. The mysteries. And the things that are happening right now. The exposures of the rulers of darkness of this world. The exposures of all the principalities. The exposures of all the corruption and destruction. The exposure of lawlessness and wickedness. All the exposure is all oozing up now. Ephesians 5.
And we're here to see it. Actually, we're here to expose it. Oh, happy days. Hallelujah. That's why the word says in the last days, there'll be perilous times, right? People will become what? Lovers of themselves because self-awareness will take control of everything. Lovers of money. Everything will be about self. In verse 1, Ephesians 5. Therefore be what? Imitators of God as dear children. In other words, imitate the integrity of Christ. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as if fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness like them, but now you're light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And don't have any fellowship with the what? Unfruitful works of darkness. Why? Because you'll know them by their fruits. But what? Rather expose them. Expose them. Expose them. See, if you can't expose yourself, you can't expose anything else. Amen? People are trying to expose everyone else when they're walking in deception themselves. For the shameful to even speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. By the what? By the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which dissipation, but be filled with the what? Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And submitting, respecting one another in the fear of God. In other words, imitate the integrity of, the, of Christ. Expose deception of evil. Don't fall asleep in any delusion or deception. Maintain a readiness and awareness. Everyone say readiness and awareness of evil influence. Stay filled with the Spirit. Maintain a high level of the fear of God. Avoiding fellowship or approval of the unruling or the unsubmissive. To the divine order of Christ Jesus. Does everybody understand that? You know, so many times people don't realize that. Because the way a deceptive mind thinks. And, I'm, you know, you see this all the time. Unless you finally cut off from that. Anything that is open to it. That individuals believe that. They're okay and approved. It's just like a child. When a child is disobedient and rebellious, rebellious you have to cut your, you have, sometimes you just have to walk away before you kill them. <laughs> but you just have to walk away because sometimes rejection is the only thing that gets their attention. Does everybody get it? And we have to do that also in the kingdom. He says, walk away from the unruly. Don't have any association with them. I've never blocked so many people in my life. On Facebook, my cell phone, everything else. Because if they're not submissive to the divine order of God, 
that are not with me, they're against me. And until people stand up and stop pleasing man and start pleasing God, that will continue to allow those individuals to think they're approved. And it's okay. Hello? Why? Because we are in end time exposure. This is what it's about. End time what? Exposure. Yes. Psalm 43. I had to block Biden. I wasn't going to take his texts no more. Or his emails. Same thing with Clinton. I had to, I had to block him. I'm not going to donate to their foundation. <laughs> Psalm 43. Oh, hallelujah. End time exposures. Verse 1. Let's speak it. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against the ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O send out your what? Your light and your truth. Why? Does light expose darkness? Does truth expose darkness? Yes. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God to make my exceeding joy. And on a harp I will praise you, O oh my God. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Again, light and truth will expose the deception of darkness that has taken so many into captivity. With the, that they've been taken into captivity with the promotion of self-awareness. <laughs> Have fallen asleep, not awake yet. Light and truth. Light and what? Truth. Is truth light? Amen. Is light truth? Yeah, praise God. Job 28. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm an exposer. Of evil. <laughs> Job 28. You know, it's, and, and, and again, we are talking in the area of, in the spirit realm. Amen? And, but in the physical realm, we see the manifestation of what's being, what's going on in the spiritual realm. Now, there's an area to where, uh, you know, you might have more understanding of something than somebody else. It doesn't make that person bad or anything. Amen? It just that makes that person in a state of, Deception. I mean, how many, every one of, everyone in the, uh, here, uh, of each and every one of us has always believed in something and found out we were wrong. Amen? I mean, we had a, we had a better life on it and then found out we were wrong. In fact, we had a better life on certain people and found out we were wrong. Amen? We'd all have been dead 40 times or 50 times, you know? Job 28, verse 20. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Oops. I'm not there yet. Job 28.20. We'll go to 20, verse 24, 28. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Job 20. 8, 20. I'm in the wrong place. I'll get it. From where then does wisdom come? 
And where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. Destruction and death say, we have heard a report about it with our ears. God understands its way and he knows its place. For he looks at the ends of the earth and sees under the whole heaven to establish a weight for the wind and appropriation the waters by the measure. When he made a law for the rain and a path for the thunderbolt, then he saw wisdom and declared it. He prepared it. Indeed, he searched it out. And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is what? Understanding. Wow. So we see that wisdom is associated with, wisdom is associated with sight. Um, wisdom is associated with sight when you have understanding. It brings what? Sight. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. Depart from evil is understanding. Discernment is always the outcome when wisdom and understanding are put together. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. That brings discernment. He said, the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Depart from evil is understanding. To fulfill end time exposure of demonic agendas, we need discernment. Big time. Amen. Discernment. And Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17, in verse 20. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. Depart from evil is understanding. It's needed to fulfill end time exposure of demonic agendas to expose them. That means we need discernment. Amen. Proverbs 17, 20, let's speak it. He who has a deceitful heart finds no good. And he who has a perverse tongue falls into evil. He who regrets or begets a scoffer does so to his sorrow. And the father of a fool has no joy. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A wicked man accepts a bribe behind the back to pervert the ways of justice. That means, listen, when a person accepts a bribe in the spirit realm, they're touching and agree with something that's unclean. The enemy's always bribing people. 24. Wisdom is in the sight of him who has what? Understanding. But the eyes of a fool are the ends, are in the ends of the earth. In other words, wisdom is sight to those with understanding. But fools are not, they can't receive the wisdom of God. They use the wisdom of the world. So this is where God is exposing all the things of corruption, all the things that are going on in the world right now. And how people will come to their senses and escape the deceptions and delusions in this world that's taking so many people captive. But without our participation as the body of Christ, because this is how things get exposed. Look at all the, right now there's righteous journalists and news reporters. There's righteous websites. They are all together, been people that searching this stuff out for 30 and 20, 30, 40 years. And finally come up, people have left families that have been involved in the occult, military. And the, in fact, some of them were involved in the deep state that have left it and now are exposing it because you know what? They're about to be exposed themselves. So now they're turning on one another. So now we're getting more and more information of more and more exposure that's happening right now. And the world is becoming awake. Awake of the evilness that it's in it. Let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1. Right. 
for many people that are, are being able to discern these things or what's going on, they are drawing closer to God. For the ones that are not, they're drawing closer to their self-awareness. Verse 15. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being what? Enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. Are we his body? Yeah. The fullness of him who fills all and all. Faith in the Lord. In other words, his connection in the Lord. It, releasing the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowing him with eyes of understanding. That's the ability to see and expose. It is the ability to what? See and expose. The greatness of God and the wickedness of evil. In other words, we are exposing the greatness of God. And we're also exposing the wickedness of evil. Exposure is a representation which means bring to light. Bring to what? Light. So our, our responsibility is to expose, to bring to light to those who are blinded, who've been taken captive, who can't see. Isaiah 66. End time exposure. Actually, there's end time exposures. Isaiah sixty six, verse one. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? Where is his house now? We are. Amen. For all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. He who kills a bull is as if, if he slays a man, and he who sacrifices a lamb is if he breaks a dog's neck. He who offers a grain offering is if he offers swine's blood. He who burns incense is if he blesses an idol. Now, here's, here's reality. People love to burn incense. It's, uh, incense is a representation of an idol. There's always inc a connected idol to incense. Does everybody understand? Incense for me and you is prayer. It's amazing how many believers I go in their house are burning incense. They say, man, what's the, what's the name of that incense? Oh, it's peace. I said, yeah. Ain't no peace there. It's false peace. Oh, this one here is joy. And this one here is, get it out of here. The only righteous incense is your prayers. Amen. He who burns incense as if he blesses a what? idol just as they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations so I will choose their what I will choose their what their delusions and bring their fears on them because when I called no one answered in other words God's trying to get their attention he's exposing to get their attention when I spoke they did not hear me but they did evil before my eyes, 
and chose that in which I do not delight. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Your brethren who hated you, who cast you out of my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, that we may see your joy. But they shall be, what? A shame. So God is telling us, look, there's going to be a lot of exposure. You're going to find brothers and sisters. They're going to come against you because of what you stand for. Amen? Exposure is a process of rebuilding also. Because when things get exposed, then there's an opportunity to rebuild. There's a place of restoring and resetting. Putting all things back in divine order. Hmm. You know, people are falling in an in, in area to where there's deep delusion and, and inabil inability to obtain a true perception of true reality of events and influences right now. They can't grab it. You know, the Lord warned us, he said, division would be in the house of God and resulting in hatred toward one another for the lack of exposure. Because people are not willing to expose themselves or willing to allow the Spirit to expose them. That's why the Word says, examine yourself. And Matthew chapter 10. Is everybody okay? End time exposures. We're seeing it politically. We're seeing it militarily. We're seeing it in the media. We're seeing it all over. Their fruits are manifesting and they don't care. What they, they don't have anything to lose because they know they've lost. So they're going to take as many people down with them as possible. Don't be one of them. Verse 16. Let's speak it. Jesus said, Behold, I what? Send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. You got that right. Therefore he be what? Wise as a serpent and harmless as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you and through you. Now brethren will deliver you up to brother. brother will, now brother will deliver you up to brother to death. And father his children. And children will rise up against, against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For surely I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It's enough for a disciple that he be like a teacher and a servant like his master. If they had called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his own household? Therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. Do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Oh, happy days. Hatred for his name will be manifested because people will be exposed. Regimes and organizations and all the areas of antichrist will be exposed. Hatred for his name's sake because of the inability to expose their own influence. These individuals will be taken captive by demonic emotional doctrine and blinded to the truth. They will be unable to break free from the self-awareness of pride. This is where we're at right now. Many losing the ability to expose true evil while 
they expose lies of flawed perceptions themselves because they have fallen into them. Many are exposing them themselves by what they're just doing. Hello? What does the word say? Stay away. Depart from evil. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1. It's amazing to me. I get stuff telling me, yeah, well, this is what's happened, that's what's happened. I say, you still watching that stupid stuff? Yes. Well, you bit the bait of deception. And man, if you try to expose them, they get real upset. Boy, they get angry. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 3. I don't know if you've seen any Congress meetings when they're all gathered together and they're talking. Man, they want to kill each other. Because they're exposing one another. Verse 3, let's speak it. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did and as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remember the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power of love and a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his, me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also, what? Suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what he has have committed to him until that day. Hold fast the powder, pattern of what? Sound words which you have heard from me in faith and in love, which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This you know, that all those in Asia have turned away from me, among whom also Philagasius and Hermonides. The Lord grant mercy to the household of Ophrephrius, for they often refreshed me and was now ashamed of my change. But when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out very jealously and found me. The Lord grant him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day. And you know very well how many ways he ministered to me in Ephesus. Listen, in this he said, fear will nullify a sound mind. It nullifies love. It nullifies power to overcome. It brings people into captivity. When we fall into the area of fear, we become anxious. You know, people fall into fear with rejection. They fear that people don't love them. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. By exposing fear, it's removing, by the power for us to expose, it removes fears from the influence. We're to be holding fast to those things and holding fast to those who are walking in the spirit with sound doctrine, who carry the light and truth. Remember, associations bring impartation. That's in everything. Music, videos, everything. People. In 2 Thessalonians 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. A 
It's time to step out of man-pleasing and step into God-pleasing. In verse 5, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 5. Let's speak it. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. And the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, with signs and lying wonders. That means great deception. With all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound... To give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved, by the Lord. Because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To which he called you by our own gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by our epistle. And now may the... May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. There's great un uh, unrighteous deception and strong delusion. It escalates in a place of flawed perceptions. People are, their perceptions are dull. They're nullified. They can't perceive correctly. They can't understand timing of God. They've been taken captive by their own deceptive desires. I call them emotional doctrines. In Proverbs chapter 2. End time exposures. In verse 1. Let's speak it. Proverbs 2 verse 1. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ears to what? Wisdom. And apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment. And lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord. And you will find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for who? The upright. For who? Those who are walking in divine order. Those who do not walk in divine order have fallen from the wisdom from above. And taken the wisdom from the earth. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and every good thing and every good path. When wisdom does what? Enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil. From the man who speaks perverse things. From those who leave the paths of uprightness. To walk in the ways of darkness. Who rejoice in doing evil. And delight in the perversity of the what? The wicked. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And discernment from above. Establishes the ability to discern, see, and expose. It's supported by the activation of the divine nature. It's supported by what? The activation of the divine nature. 
See, so many people don't realize that the divine nature must be active in each and every one of us. So many times people's divine nature have fallen asleep. They've allowed it. They've separated themselves. They're relying on self-awareness more than the divine nature. They're relying on their human nature, which is the awareness of self. Dependent on themselves instead of God. Or they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. That's, dis that's disapproving the divine nature from being activated. Remember, when the divine nature is activated, I mean, you're connected. You're connected. Nothing can hurt you. You see, you know, you pursue, you search out your enemy, you look for conviction. You're in the spirit. You're not here anymore. You know all things that pertain to walking before God. And you're an overcomer of any attack if you're in that place and position. You are steadfast, unmovable, consistent, and stable. Amen? This is where God can trust an individual who lives out of the divine nature. And too many people have been shaken, gone back into self-awareness and self, relying on themselves, dependent on themselves, relying on their abilities instead of his abilities. Is everybody okay? And I'm going to close at Hebrews 12. Verse 25. End time exposures. It's about to increase. So what's God doing? Preparing us. So that we're not shaken away. Don't fall off your foundation. Verse 25, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a what? Consuming fire. So the shaking is going to increase. To remove all those things to expose the ability to go beyond one's self-awareness that have been hindered by flawed perceptions. God is releasing the wisdom and knowledge and understanding to see the true reality of all things that's being shaken. Everything is a shaken. Everything's coming to surface. Nothing's going to be hidden or all be seen. But even though it comes to the surface, many people still can't see it. They're still veiled. They're still deceived. Their perception is still flawed. It's our responsibility to expose and to be available. Amen? That doesn't mean you go up to everyone and call them an idiot because they're blinded. Amen? Or rip off the mask off their face, although you'd like to. But We want to be a light and an example of God's love, His presence. Amen? So you must restrain the old man. Amen? <laughs> yes. Remember, you must choke, react until respond comes forth in the divine nature, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you for your word and preparation for what's getting ready to come so we ain't shaken. And so we don't get caught up in the flesh. Help us. Seal this word, protect it, and let it grow and bear fruit for your glory, in Jesus' name. Prepare your hearts for communion.